Most people see only a blue-gray blur through the car window when they pass it. Sagebrush covers an estimated 153 million acres of the western United States, but it's commonly seen as drab and unimpressive and gets little attention. Yeah, we're a pretty fast-paced society, and uh, things that aren't uh, flashing red lights or have bright colors don't seem to attract us. So we do bypass sagebrush as we go down the highway, thinking that it's just sagebrush. You can tell sagebrush by its pungent odor. But when scientists talk about sagebrush, they're usually referring to more than just this aromatic shrub. They use it as a general term to describe a wide array of plants, including antelope bitterbrush, wildflowers, and grasses that grow in combination with sagebrush. Well, it's uh, part of the landscape. It's been here forever. Without it, there are certain components of the landscape that uh, can't function properly. Land managers have not always viewed sagebrush that way. A retired Forest Service ecologist, Alma Winward, has been studying sagebrush for more than 40 years. He remembers the time when sagebrush wasn't all that popular. Well, in those days, everything emphasized livestock forage. And because sagebrush is not eaten very much, it wasn't very popular. And so a lot of the studies and a lot of the classes that I took emphasized efforts that are designed to get rid of sagebrush and they used the word annihilate sagebrush. Researchers now estimate that various sagebrush species provide food and shelter for as many as 87 different mammals, 297 bird species, and 63 kinds of fish, reptiles, and amphibians. In winter, standing above the snow, sagebrush provides food for mule deer, antelope, and elk. Its deep roots recycle nutrients through the soil. But just as land managers are beginning to appreciate sagebrush, an energy boom across the West threatens to uproot it. In their quest for natural gas, energy companies are clearing sagebrush to make room for drill pads, roads, and pipelines. We saw some pretty heavy use lands. We saw some lands that uh, the energy fields are going to, I don't know what we'll do. I imagine it'll we'll get it back to sagebrush someday, but it's going to take a lot of effort and a lot of dollars. With the current energy boom in Wyoming and the current expansion of all the infrastructure, the roads, the power lines, uh, the developments that, that are occurring, uh, you know, the residential developments as, as, as population centers expand, and this whole concept of wind energy, new power lines, new pipeline corridors, we're seeing a significant change to the landscape in Wyoming. And as sagebrush disappears, so do species that depend on it, including Western icons like the sage grouse. So how are sage grouse going to coexist out there with man? And what's going to happen basically is that sage grouse numbers will decline. Some areas you'll lose sage grouse. And we'll keep some, in areas where we have relatively intact habitat, we'll keep, keep some sage grouse. Sagebrush is the desert's forest. And as development carves up the sagebrush grasslands, Scientists worry that remaining fragments will not be big enough to support species that depend on this shrub. Sage grouse require large blocks of sagebrush habitat. Some birds have home ranges the size of Rhode Island. Sagebrush also represents the wide open spaces and Wild West imagery that draws visitors and residents to the Rockies. Learning to appreciate this grayish blue blur as a rich and complex community could be the first step toward maintaining sagebrush as a vital part of the western landscape. For Assignment Earth on Yahoo News, I'm Gary Stryker.